everyone, welcome back to the Cyber Union. This week I had a really interesting question. It was from someone that's already had their SEC Plus and a couple of other certifications and they were interested in getting into the pen testing track. So of course they naturally thought of the OSCP, the Offensive Security Certified Professional Exam. A little bit difficult, you probably heard some horror stories about it, uh, but on this episode we're going to talk about the top five things you can do to actually prepare yourself for this and get your money out of it and pass on the first go through. So all that information is going to be coming right up. Alright, so the OSCP. Um, if you haven't heard of it and you're just watching this, it is a penetration testing certification. It's like that intro. It's the bare basics of what you need to know to get a job. Um, and if you're interested in applying, they're probably going to ask if you have this. Um, so it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and uh, if you're hopping from something like the CEH, you're going to realize it's a big difference. They're not going to be holding your hand and you're going to be required to spend a lot of time studying and doing a lot of research to really understand the concepts you need to learn to pass the exam. So let's dive right in and talk about the five things that are really going to help you pass this exam. The first is time. Like I already mentioned, it takes a lot of time. And people truly underestimate how much time. For me, my three months studying, I spent every waking second and spare second studying, hopping into the lab and really putting a lot of effort in to learn on these different boxes and trying new techniques. So time is the biggest constraint, right? We always have time as a constraint when learning. Uh, in this case, it's very much so because you're, the time's ticking. As soon as you purchase it, you got three months, unless you want to pay more money, to get through the labs and pass the exam. So remember to make sure you have time set aside and this is going to be your focus for three months. So time is a big one. Don't underestimate it. Um, the next, number two, is going to be note taking. Um, whatever you choose to use, whether it's um, Evernote, that's what I use, or OneNote, you need some sort of note-taking system where you can search your notes for a particular technique or something you've seen before. And you're going to be using it even as you progress into your professional career. You're going to be taking notes of great tools and techniques you find along the way. And it's going to be your own personal library, so think of it like that. Something you can access from anywhere and something you can put all your notes into. So find a good note-taking system. Number three, this is a kind of a prep step. There is a website called Vuln Hubs, and I'm going to put it down in the links below where people build vulnerable systems. Now there happens to be about five or six that are very similar to some of the test machines in the OSCP that you can practice on. And what's fantastic about these is that they actually have walkthroughs. So you can follow along and do the steps yourself and, of course, take notes along the way of how someone has conquered this box, this vulnerable system themselves, and then take that with you into the labs once you start your lab time. So go on the Vuln Hubs, hop on the link below to get the list of uh, vulnerable systems to download and practice on. Um, number four, this is very big. A lot of people getting into the cybersecurity space don't have any Linux experience. Linux is going to be a big part of your exam because you're going to be using Kali Linux. So if you haven't used that yet, make sure you hop on, download that. I'll put that in the link below for you as well. Um, but a lot of the systems are also going to be Linux. So you're not only going to be exploiting Windows systems, but Linux. So you need to be able to understand how to maneuver through the command line and through the various file systems in Linux to be able to pass the exam. Because if you're not familiar with both, you're going to have a really difficult time. So take some time before you start and learn. Um, Linux Plus is a, a great course to study. You don't have to pass the exam, but it's a great book that teaches you some really good techniques. Um, and the last thing, kind of on the same line of command line knowledge, is programming knowledge. A lot of people have minimal experience with that as well, and of course, as a pen tester or ethical hacker, you're going to be pushing software to its limits, forcing it to do something it really wasn't designed to do. Um, and to do that, you kind of understand, you have to understand the underlying code and the programming languages uh, that it's running on. And some of these being Python, Bash, um, SQL and PHP are good examples. And what I would recommend is you hop on Code Academy, it's a free training site, and do the introductory courses for those. And I'll put those again down in the link, same with Code Academy. Hop on there and do the intros. 
And then when you start exploiting web systems and operating systems, you'll be able to work through the code a lot easier because now you understand the fundamentals. And by getting this all up front, that's less studying you have to do while you're in your lab time window uh, so you can focus on the techniques instead of actually learning the technology and language instead. So those are your top five things to work on before you get into the OSCP labs. So get that stuff straight so you can pass the labs on your first go through. If you have any questions, comment down below. Um, hop onto our website, thecyberunion.com. We're going to have a blog on this as well with some additional links and information. So check both out. And feel free to like and subscribe if you like this content. And let us know what other kind of information we can help you with. Take care.